I'm going to try again to explain acceleration of a particle of fluid. If I have a little chunk of fluid sitting down here and it's in a velocity field that varies all over the page here, then it may move in this direction with time, it may move in this direction with time, or it may move in a combination of the two. So if we make this y and that the x direction, and we're interested in tracking its uh, acceleration in the x direction, then as the particle moves from here, say up to here, a little time later, then it's going to travel through a distance delta x, and it's going to also travel through a distance delta y. And both of those motions are going to be, need to be accounted for in keeping track of its velocity. So if the velocity u is a function of x, y, and time, then there are three separate partial derivatives. There's the partial derivative di u di x, that's taken with y and t held constant. So at any instant in time, that's the difference between the velocity in the x direction, the u component of velocity, at one location and the u component of velocity at another location, delta x away. Then there's di u di y with x and t held constant. That accounts for the difference in the u velocity over the y direction. So if u down here was like this and u up here was like that, then that would have di u di y positive at a given time. If u was equal to that value there and somewhat smaller over here, then at a given time that leads us to di u di x negative. And finally, if we just stay in one place and look at time t versus time delta t, we might go from u equal to that value at time t to u equal to this value at time t plus delta t, and that would correspond to di u di t right here at this spot being negative. It went from a positive velocity to a negative velocity in the x direction. So in tracking this individual particle as it moves from here, we need to keep track of the three different changes it undergoes. It'll change because things are just changing with time, even if we look at the same location in the Eulerian space defined by our x and y coordinate system. It may change its velocity because as it moves in the x direction, it slows down, in this instance with di u di x negative. It may change its x velocity because as it moves in the y direction, its x velocity u changes, in this case in a positive sense, so di u di y is positive. So the overall change Let's just remember that we also have the partial derivative of u with respect to time, x and y held constant. So the overall change, the substantive derivative, the acceleration with time of the particle, rather than just the change in the velocity with time at a location, d 
du dt is going to depend on how much change it undergoes because it moves in the x direction. So there'll be a di u di x term. How much change it undergoes because it moves in the y direction. So there'll be a di u di y term. And how much change it undergoes because the whole fluid is changing. So there's just, even if it stayed in this location, there'd be a di u di t term. Now the di u di t term doesn't need to be modified by anything. It's just added on. The di u di y term, it'll depend on how far it moves in the y direction. So how far does it move in the y direction with a given time? What's the rate of motion in the y direction? Well that's just the v component of velocity. It moved from here up to here because v was positive. The bigger v is, the further it moves. So v di u di y. That's the velocity component that's making it go that way. And then the amount of change for di u di x, that depends on how far it moved in the x direction. The distance it moves in the x direction per unit time, that's the u component of velocity. The velocity in the x-direction. So it's moving this way at a velocity u. Because it moved from here to here, positive x, u is positive. u times d, di u di x gives us the amount it changed because it moved in the x-direction. So this is what we get for two dimensions. And if we allow for the fact that we've got a z dimension in and out of the page here, then we'll wind up with capital DU DT, the substantive derivative, the acceleration for the particle rather than the change in velocity at a given location. The acceleration for the particle is di U di T plus U di U di X plus V di U di Y plus w di u di z. That's the acceleration of the particle in the x direction. And there'll also be an acceleration, for example, in the y direction. dv dt, the acceleration in the y direction, equal to di v di t, plus a term for how much it moves in the x direction, this time di v di x, because we're interested in how much v changes as we move from here to here, plus v di v di y plus w di v di z. So that's in three dimensions and there'll be an additional term for dw dt in the z direction. And I'll leave that for you to figure out.